my name is Catherine, and I think I can help you with this problem. So here we have a nonlinear system, and we need to find the critical points. Now, the first thing we need to do clearly is to know what a critical point is in order to know how to find it. So I have a random graph. This is just the sine function. It is not the system you have here. But to demonstrate what a critical point is, um, let's just look at this graph for a quick sec. So a critical point is anywhere where the derivative is equal to zero. So we need x prime of t and y prime of t um, all to equal zero in order to have a critical point. And visually speaking, what that looks like on a graph is it's these kinds of points here. This is a critical point. This is a critical point. This is a critical point. These are places where the tangent line is a flat horizontal line. So the derivative with respect to x, x prime of t, or and the derivative with respect to y, y prime of t, are all equal to zero here. So that's what we need. In, that's what we need to find. So how do we do that with a system of equations? We don't have a graph here. We're not doing this visually. So x prime of t has to equal zero. Y prime of t has to equal zero. So we can reduce this to be um, a simple algebraic problem. Alternatively, this is a multiple choice question. So I would also really recommend taking the ordered pairs that they've given us here and plugging those into the equations that you have in order to check and make sure you get zero for both x prime and y prime of t. So the way we would do that is just to simply say, you know, the square root of two is x of t and one is y of t. And we would plug those into this, these equations up here. So we can do that really quickly just to see. So we would have zero equals y of t is one times, again, y of t is one minus one. And we're gonna check to make sure that's true. So does zero equal one times zero? Yes, it does. So that's a viable option. Then again, we can do that with our y value. Let's get that out of the way. And let's get another equation here. So our next equation, y prime of t, we again need that to equal zero. So we're gonna say zero equals, all right, x of t, what's that? The square root of two, but we're squaring it. So we have two, right? And then minus y of t, which is one. Again, down here, we have our one. And then minus another one. So does zero equal two minus two? Yes, it does. So this first option, the square root of two and one, is definitely a critical point of this system. In order to go about this more directly, just for informational purposes, I would definitely plug each of these options into your equations and just do the simple algebraic check to see which ones are critical points. But just for informational purposes, here's how you go about it a little more directly. Let's start with our first equation and see what happens. We know we need x prime of t to equal zero, so we're just gonna take the equation they gave us and plug in zero and solve for y of t to see what we get. Now here, we could we have two choices. We could divide both sides of the equation by y of t, and we're gonna end up with zero equals y of t minus one. So that means we have one equals y of t. Alternatively, we could have chosen to divide both sides of the equation by y of t minus one in its closed parentheses. So then we're gonna end up with zero equals y of t. So there are two potential solutions to this, zero and one. If we go back to our choices really quickly, we'll see in the y of t space, in our ordered pairs, every single option has either zero or one for y of t. So those are all viable options, but again, I would go back and check the way we did on the first one. When we get to our second equation, we have a little bit of a trick there. Y prime of t equals x of t squared minus y of t minus one. So we have both x of t and y of t in this equation. When we plug in zero for y prime of t here, we still have an x of t and a y of t. But based on the work we just did, we know there are only two options for y of t, zero and one. So we're gonna split this into two cases. 
one, we're going to plug in zero for y of t. And over here in our second case, we're going to plug in one for y of t. And now again, this is a simple algebraic problem to solve. Over here, we end up with one equals x of t squared. Over here, we end up with two equals x of t squared. So over here, we're going to end up with plus or minus the square root of 2. Let me see if I can get that out here. Plus or minus the square root of 2 for x of t. Over here, we're going to, I'm sorry, I meant plus or minus 1 um, over here. Plus or minus the square root of 2 is going to go over here because we have x squared equals 2. So plus or minus root 2 is going to be over here. So again, if we go back to the choices that we had on our first page, we see the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2, 1 and minus 1 are what we have here. So I would go through, keep checking the rest of these to see which ones end up with true statements and which ones don't. But that's how you would go about solving this problem directly as well. Best of luck.